Hi there, and welcome back to In the Studio at Davis Media Access. I'm your host today, Madeline Hamaguchi, and uh, I have some special guests with me today from the Davis Shakespeare Festival. Uh, Gabby Batista is the development director, and Kyle Stoner is an actor in this season. So we're just going to jump right into it. Um, a lot of people come up uh, and ask us about what is the Davis Shakespeare Festival, or they say to us, I didn't know there was a Davis Shakespeare Festival in town. So, Gabby, can you tell us a little bit about, I guess, what, what is the Davis Shakespeare Festival? What do we do? Good question. Well, the Davis Shakespeare Festival is a festival that goes on through the summer. Um, and it actually lasts from mid-June till the end of October. And it's the idea of during the summertime, the community can tend to feel empty because students are out in summertime, kids are busy, families are vacationing, and sometimes that can leave the town of Davis feeling a little bit lonely. But the idea of the festival uh, about nine years ago was to create an event in which people could go to in Davis to keep the town alive, to keep the town busy and bustling, and the vision is to eventually create a, a destination location for people that live either in Davis um, or people that live in the surrounding areas to just come and enjoy some theater, enjoy um, the community, what's around in Davis. I mean, Davis has so much to offer in terms of um, art and music and culture and I mean it's becoming a well-known establishment mm -hmm. even in the recent years right. so uh, we have been very excited to be a part of that especially during um, the summer season we would call it the slower season but now you know we even find that it's getting busier now in the recent years I mean mm -hmm. um, the summer extension is happening with UC Davis and there's newer businesses that are coming through town. And so we're actually seeing more community come together even in the summer months. And we're very excited to welcome people in and um, show them um, our shows and, and actually educate our audiences right. with um, classical plays and off the beaten path musicals and then putting a spin on our Shakespeare shows, which are always very exciting. We love to modernize our Shakespeare and even right. do an outreach with children to teach them that Shakespeare is tangible. It's, it's very um, colloquial and you can really relate to it even right. today. It's current, you can, it, you, you, you can understand it because it talks about um, core human aspects of life. Exactly, yeah. Um, it, you know, you were mentioning a little bit about the classical plays and, and the, the different kinds of plays that the Shakespeare Festival does and uh, I've noticed that uh, David Shakespeare is part of kind of a theater company boom, it seems, in Davis. It's bringing um, a, a particular kind of theater to, to, to the town. You know, there's Bike City Theater that does other, um, you know, different, different plays, kind of contemporary sketch comedy, stuff like that. And then you have Art Theater of Davis doing their thing and bar Barnyard Theater. So can you tell us a little bit, like, how these classical plays sort of work with Davis to represent, so like the, the Midsummer Night's Dream last mm -hmm. year, for example, yeah. um, that brought in various aspects of, of Davis in terms of the culture, the town, even how people dress, how people talk, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Yeah, well, it's really exciting to find that now we have a lot of theater companies I mean, there's been theater companies in Davis that we've been inspired by, and then now we're finding that there's new developments that we're still inspired by because there's now a company that is doing new works and um, really uh, challenging Davis to think outside of the box and, and to educate Davis even more on mm -hmm. how important new works are. Uh, I think for a Davis Shakespeare Festival, what we really love about classics is kind of putting that same or similar edge or approach to it as well. It's, it's challenging the audience in a way of, of modernizing the text uh, through the theme and through um, the style, the way, the way we dress, you know, 
dress the actors and mm -hmm. um, Rob Salas, who's who usually directs the Shakespeare, really loves taking um, taking the Shakespeare play and modernizing it to a very specific theme. And last year was very special because it was Davis Centennial. Um, so we really wanted to pay homage to that and and celebrate Davis um, the way everyone else was last year as well. Um, right. We really wanted to honor Davis and tip our hats off to, uh, I don't know, to to pay attention to the little things in Davis that you may not notice on the everyday basis, but just how many people ride their bikes and, mm -hmm. and you know, how many bikes that there are that have quirky lights on them or um, the people that just bring so much character to this town because they've been here for so many years and right. they just appreciate the history. And there are so many Davis locals that just are so proud of of having generations just living here and, mm -hmm. and um, appreciating and the yeah. the growth that has come from that. So we really wanted to uh, specialize in in that theme last year and just make it this fun, whimsical bike right. town of Midsummer instead. Right. So um, having Puck, who, who Kyle Stoner played, ride on how many bikes did you ride on? About seven? Uh, seven or eight, yeah. A lot. Yeah. It was, and that was all right. um, sponsored and um, uh, we borrowed those bikes from Whimsical Bike Man who has right. a whole he's yard a, full of bikes. He's so, a cornerstone of, of yes. Davis. Yeah. So it, it felt it like an honor to uh, really focus on that and, and bring people from all corners of Davis uh, to be a part of the show and it was a really special experience and I think coming from that show we really want to continue to mm -hmm. um, honor Davis mm -hmm. in the way that it's helped us out as a theater company so much just expand and grow we want to make sure that uh, people in Davis really feel honored as well that the fact that we really appreciate the community so we want to share what yeah what uh we design and create with exactly them. yeah and 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 uh, you know that like you said it goes through to this season and um would kyle could you tell us a little bit about the shows this season we we, we do have um uh we have a musical um, yeah so every year it, during the summer season we have two shows in repertory so this year we're doing on the 20th century is the musical we're doing and then every other day we switch out the show. So it's on the 20th century is the musical, and then the play is called Mary Stewart. Cool. Uh, it was originally written in 1800, but we're doing an updated translation with uh, modernized text. But the, it's not a Shakespeare play, but it's a classical play. So we always try to do a uh, unique, uh, you know, usually unheard of musical, and then a, a classical play in repertory during the summer season. So on the 20th century is um, like, a, it's a, like a zany satire. It's kind of like... This, this musical theater producer who's washed up, but he's on a train from New from Chicago to New York, and he has to essentially write a play and cast a star in the play by the time he gets to New York, and and it's just this really zany comedy that's kind of like melodrama and satire about them trying to scramble, you know, with crazy people on right. the train and and you know, stars and washed up producers and. It's a really funny show, and so we're doing that show, and then on the flip side of the repertory season, we're doing Mary Stewart, which is a play that was written about a fictional meeting that never happened between Mary Stewart and Queen Elizabeth, because Mary Stewart was imprisoned by Queen Elizabeth because of her right to be heir to the throne, and so Queen Elizabeth uh, uh, imprisoned her, and th it's, a big, it's a big story in history, but the, the play that was written in the 1800s added... Uh, fictional meeting where they mm -hmm. actually met and the play's really cool because the, the text is beautiful but having these two like towering historical female figures like come together in the same scene is really really interesting to watch because there's so much history be behind each of them a a as real figures so it's a really cool play to explore like how their personalities clash and and the the palace intrigue that happens around the two of them and the the revolution that's that's happening under Mary while she's, you know, being imprisoned. And, right. And so uh, the different thing about this season is that normally when we do the classical play, it's generally been a comedy. So this year, Mary Stewart's a drama. I mean, there's comedy in it, but, um, but it's, it's a serious play. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, really, it's really interesting and, and engaging and compelling. And so this year we're doing, like, a zany comedy paired with this drama, and it's going right. to be... 
it's going to be a really, really cool season. Yeah, that's that's going to be exciting, and yeah. and, and uh, uh, Shakespeare too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we do so Shakespeare. Then, so we so we do the summer the summer festivals, those two shows in rep, and then in the fall we're doing As You Like It, which is a comedy Shakespeare's mm -hmm. comedy, and it's uh it's it's basically about uh, this this woman who is banished from the city that she lives in. Her father's you know a very important man, and uh, I don't really know what the concept's going to be yet, uh, as far as design. But the yeah. play itself is very funny. They get banished to the forest, and then, and and then she has to disguise herself as a man so that nobody in the forest takes advantage of her. And then she finds the man that she fell in love with also in the forest, but he thinks she's a guy. So she's trying to make him fall in love with her by pretending that she's a girl, but she is a girl. But she's pretending to be a yeah. guy who's not <laughs> pretending to be a girl. So it's like you know classic Shakespeare, basically. It is. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, really and good. it's got some really interesting characters. There's yeah. the uh, the jester Touchstone, who's one of the more interesting Shakespeare fools because he's very highly intelligent and sarcastic, and mm -hmm. uh, and then Jaques, who has the all the world's a stage speech. That's from As You Like It. There's a lot of really cool uh, things that happen in that play. There's also a wrestling match. And so if that's uh, right, and you can <laughs> see on the screen right now, we're uh, we have a website. I say we. David Shakespeare has a website, uh, and you can find out more information about each of these plays and uh, uh, a full plot synopsis and uh, look at cast lists. And also, if you hover over the, uh, we're, we're going to transition now. And if you hover over the education tab and you click on Camp Shakespeare. This is another thing under our umbrella. We have a few minutes, so let's talk about this, and then um, we'll talk a little bit more as well about how you can get involved. So just a little short blurb about Camp Shakespeare. Sure. Uh, Camp Shakespeare is a really great way for um, children from ages 7 to actually even 18 to mm -hmm. connect with our festival in, every season. So we take uh, the shows that we are cur currently doing, and we uh, teach them to... Um, any ch child that is interested in learning more about not only Shakespeare, but just theater in general, yeah. how to uh, design costumes or make a set or even stage combat or uh, vi Victorian and um, Renaissance dancing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so we take a lot of the elements of what goes into theater and we uh, bring it to, to our, our kids during Camp Shakespeare. So we teach them all these elements and then we teach them the plays that are concurrently going on. So it's exciting for those kids to uh, get to read the text and get excited about the story. And then when they come and see it at the Veterans Memorial Theater, they, they light up, they get so excited about yeah. what they're actually working on can actually look like right. what they see on stage. So Yeah, and that's, it does. It, it, cre it makes the festival more accessible to kids. And uh, it, it, in that same light as well, kids can get involved. And how do, and in the last, you know, minute here, how are some ways that people, like grown-ups, can get involved sure. as well? Well, uh, we do have a very vast uh, variety of opportunities to volunteer. So um, ushering is included if you're interested in costumes, helping out with the set. Um, you can go on our website, and under Support Us, there's a volunteer link, and you can fill out the form and tell us what your interests are. And you can come be a part of our festival. Uh, it's a great way to get to know our, our company and our family and um, enjoy your summer with us. Yeah, yeah. that'd be great, yeah. Um, uh, it sounds like uh, you're, you're, uh, David Shakespeare's looking for different kinds of technicians and ushers and uh, y even, even uh, also m monetary support donations. Uh, you can see the uh, website on the screen there. So you can go there to find out all the information you need. Uh, thank you so much, you guys. I wish we had more time, but it's yeah. been great. And I hope you come see the Shakespeare Festival. Thank you, and we'll see you next time on In the Studio.